Ulji Mundok is a well-rounded epic commander that plays an important role in the early and mid-game in Rise of Kingdoms. In this video, we're going to give you a full guide reviewing the skills, talents, and optimal combinations that will help you get the most value from this epic commander. So stick around if you're looking for the very best builds and best pairings to start slaying your enemies on the battlefield. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming. We've been remastering our epic commander guides and Olji Mundok, he's up next. So if you like commander guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, do me a favor and smash that like button so I know that you want me to make more epic commander guides. Also, hey, consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. Now, in this video, we're gonna break down Olji Mundok, who plays a very interesting role in 2020 for Rise of Kingdoms and beyond. He is phenomenal in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms, but is not, in my opinion, one of the first epics you should invest in. Those first three epics are Boudicca, Joan of Arc, and, of course, last but not least, Sun Tzu. Now, the thing about Olji that makes him a strong contributor in Rise of Kingdoms is that he's got a little bit of utility, He's got some good anti-swarm technology, and he's just got a lot of raw stats. And all of those things are very exceptional. And if you're bringing multiple infantry marches, or you're making one of your first infantry marches in Rise of Kingdoms, Ulji Mundok should be a part of that party. However, as you advance in the game and make your way from mid to late game, we're going to point out the ways in which you will frequently find ways to replace Ulji Mundok with some other commanders that fill that role really well. So should this be one of your first epic commander investments? I don't think so. But if you're all in on infantry, or you're looking to boost your canyon team in the early game, or maybe want an open field infantry march or multiple marches, then Ulji is a solid pick. Let's take a look at these skills, the very first of which is called Water Attack. This does 750 damage factor and reduces the defense of the target by a whopping 30%. That is a massive defense reduction to the target for two seconds. The thing that I like about that is that if you're in a big group or you're in Canyon, that group is going to take huge advantage of that defense reduction on the target and deal a lot of damage. The next skill is arguably one of the weaker garrison skills available to an epic, 5% defense for the garrison of your own city. The upside of that, however, is that it is 5% to all troop types. So you're going to have all four troop types represented. It's a generally decent buff, but the weakest of the epics that are in the game at this time. The next skill that we'll get a look at is the Battle of Salsu. This gives you a solid 20% of stats. It gives an additional 10% of stats when you unlock the Expertise skill. So it's a base of 10% uh, attack and defense with the Expertise skill. Those each get boosted by 5%. The last skill we get to review is actually really solid, and it's a part of the reason Ulji Mundok is good in Canyon, and that is Strike Back. He has a 10% chance every time you're attacked to increase your damage by 100%, 100% on the next turn. That is a huge damage boost, um, but it is only for one turn. This doesn't list an internal cooldown, which means theoretically you could have this happen multiple turns in a row. And over time, that is an inevitability, assuming there is not actually an internal cooldown that will prevent that from happening. Now, these skills are really interesting because he's very versatile. Something like Strike Back makes Ulji good as a frontliner. People want to avoid hitting him because they know that's going to enable him to do more damage because it's when attacked, he has to be taking damage. Not counterattack damage, but either normal or I think maybe skill attack damage in order to make this actually trigger. So when Olji Mundok is a commander that often gets ignored, which is actually a good commander to use in the field, you can run around unharassed. The downside is largely his talent trees. He's got the infantry, garrison, and attack trees. This is a very interesting combination of trees. He is one of the only epics to have the attack tree. I know CPO also has the attack tree. Uh, but the combination of garrison and attack is somewhat unusual. We're going to show you some ways that you can really take advantage of that. And I think this will largely point to the role that I think Olji will fill on your roster. So let's get a look in at the builds that you can use on Olji Mundok. And this is far and away 
my favorite build. This is the open field build if he is the primary commander. I like this build a lot because you can make up for a bunch of the march speed that he is lacking from fleet of foot. We've gone all in on the infantry tree, by the way, to gain march speed, slow down your enemies, get as many stats as possible. And there are very few talents that we've gone for in the attack tree, but they are noteworthy. Those noteworthy talents include Lord of War, which gives a massive amount of stats. That's 1.5% attack per star level. So if you've got six stars on this commander, that's 9% attack for three talent points. Seems really good to me. Also, the rage generation is a big, big deal. Generating six rage every time you're attacked is perfect for Olji Mundok. You swarm him down, there's a huge chance he's going to do extra damage on a subsequent turn, and he's going to generate tons of rage to fire out his active skill more. I think that's very solid. For prolonged combat, effortless is really great. Every 10 seconds, you're going to get some extra damage dealt. And I do think it's important to get armor joints, reducing the damage you're taking. If you were making this build, the very first points I would go for as you're leveling up this commander would be to get Burning Blood and Lord of War, as well as Undying Fury and Armored Joints. From there, I'd make my way up to hold the line and then swing around to get Elite Soldiers. After that, you're most of the way to max and you've got some flexibility around when you want the march speed, when you want the health, and so on. Overall, I think this might be the very best build available to Olji Mundok, and that is an open field build. You need to want the march speed. You need to want the slow effect here, the opportunity to slow the enemy, uh, in order to really enjoy this particular build and get full value. I mention that because when I tried to make a really good canyon build for Olji Mundok, keeping in mind that this is a build where he doesn't need march speed, Right? He doesn't have to move around in Canyon. You don't want to put March Speed on commanders where you only care about their performance in Sunset or Lost Canyon. The challenge is that the Garrison Tree has no points that are relevant for that situation. And the Attack Tree doesn't really have much for Olji Mundok. You could increase your normal attack damage, but it comes at a cost to your active skill damage. Well, look, like Olji Mundok does active skill damage. You don't really want to reduce that. I do think that there's an opportunity over here to increase all damage dealt, but at the same time, gosh, you're probably putting him on the front line rather than the back line. And if that's the case, you don't want him taking more damage because he's getting hit by multiple marches. So this was the build that I came up with. It's very little that's changed from the open field build. You could sacrifice sort of the upper right-hand side of the tree as well as the top of the tree here to ditch all this march speed and march speed reduction. But it's very hard to get meaningful talents in the attack tree to accommodate it. So this is the build I would use if I was using him in Canyon. And frankly, I would try to use him as a secondary so you don't have to use this combination of trees. And you can use a pair of commanders that has more non-march speed related talents that are high value. The final tree that I've prepared for you is a city garrison build. This build assumes you're going to get swarmed. Now, I think that's generally a safe assumption if you're using Olji Mundok on your wall you're probably in the early game. It's unlikely you're getting rallied. And if you are, like you're in big trouble anyways, you probably need to be using a peace shield as your very best garrison defense. So if we assume that you're going to get swarmed, I really like this build a lot. Uh, there's a bunch of things that we're getting in here that contribute to your survivability. The garrison tree is disproportionately good at protecting your city. And that's really what it's there for. It's less relevant in more situations. And the benefit you get from that is in the one situation where it's good, it's really good. So we're going to go in and be picking up things like nowhere to turn to generate a lot of rage every time you're hit, impregnable to massively reduce skill damage taken. And here, know thy enemy gives you a solid 9% damage taken reduction when you are getting swarmed. So at least two marches are hitting you. The other thing I want to call your attention to is that although you could put more points into the infantry tree, we are talking about defending your city here, and you've got three other troop types besides infantry in your city. So although previously I've advocated for things like strong of body and uh, infantry health, actually you're better off with stats over here in the garrison tree that give only half a percent per point. But keep in mind, all four of your unit types benefit. So you could think of that kind of like you're getting 2% of benefit rather than the 1% of benefit you get per point over 
here. The exception, of course, being strong of body. That actually is pretty solid. And if you've overtrained on infantry, then theoretically you could trim off know thy enemy, make your way up to strong of body instead. We've also picked up some really baseline talents to generate more rage and make you be more effective when your garrison gets low. If you are starting this build from scratch, the very first points I would put into this build are to go to Impregnable and Nowhere to Turn. From there, I'd get Burning Blood and Undying Fury. From there, you've got some choices. I really like Call of the Pack, Armored Joints, and as you level up this commander more and more, Lord of War is a great choice. Make your way to Know Thy Enemy, and you're already at this point cooking with gas. You're at least level 50 plus, and you've got some options. You'll know what you're doing at that point in time for what you're final points should be as you work your way toward this particular build. Now, as I mentioned, my favorite of all these builds is the field build. And I feel like that's his primary role if he's going to be a primary commander. And that is because the rest of the builds, I didn't really feel like I could fully, most optimally deploy my talent points with the exception of maybe City Garrison. I felt like I could do some pretty good stuff there. Uh, but there are probably other commanders for game modes like Canyon and even Defending Your City where you could get some better talents on hand. For example, I really like Sun Tzu for city defense. Now, I do want to call your attention to something about this skill Strike Back that I think is pretty cool, which is that although he doesn't have area of effect damage, which is really good in something like an open field brawl, if you are defending your city with an old Mundok, what people have figured out how to do to avoid area of effect damage is they'll put one march in front of your city. I'll show you on the map over here. They, they put one march right over here. All your area of effect damage would come in a cone down this way. And then they put all their other marches behind it. But old Mundok's fourth skill really doesn't care where they're located. As long as he's taking attacks, he has more chances to do extra damage on the next turn because each person hitting him should give extra chance to make that happen. So I like that about Ulji Mundok and his fourth skill. Uh, it's really solid anti-swarm technology. Now, as far as pairings go, let's start with the epics. Um, my favorite pairing for an Ulji Mundok, this is a number one pick, is going to be Sun Tzu. For a very long time, I used the combination of Sun Tzu and Ulji Mundok in Canyon, I put them in the off lane because they're pretty tanky, actually, as a pairing. They do a lot of work there. They're very good frontliners as a pairing. I prefer the infantry and skill tree for a game mode like Canyon because you can get some better builds. Uh, but if you're using them in the open field, then either the Sun Tzu or the Ulji could be the primary. I think that CPO Africanus is an interesting secondary to Ulji Mundok. CPO adds a lot of tankiness and survivability which is good because they're going to need it because neither of them has a lot of march speed. So when they get caught out of position, they are going to get very heavily punished. The same is actually true of your Sun Tzu. Uh, however, both of them are really solid pairings as frontliners. Again, Ulji primary is something that I really like because you've got more talents that are infantry focused and you are going to want to bring all infantry if you pair with CPO. Another really solid pairing is going to be Boudica. Boudica is extremely well-rounded as a commander. I think that Ulji Mundok yet again should be the primary in that combination. The reason that I like that is that you can get the infantry tree. Compared to Boudica's integration tree, there's really no contest. Ulji should be the primary, and you can enjoy the rage reduction, the attack reduction, the rage restoration, and the healing, and the chance to do extra damage. That Boudica is offering. Now, one combo I've used extensively in Canyon on early game accounts is a Joan of Arc primary with an Ulji Mundok secondary, and you bring almost all infantry to that party. Uh, the Joan of Arc's support tree is really exceptional at rapid firing those skills. The integration tree is a little bit of a bummer, but the support tree is so good for firing off your skills frequently that I find that works really, really well. I've enjoyed that pairing and used it for a long time. Cruising through the remaining epic commanders, your final option in my eyes is going to be the Osman. Osman is solid uh, in doing huge amounts of skill damage. He really isn't interested in pairing, however, with Ulji Mundok. 
You got kind of a pickle going on here. While I prefer the infantry tree for using all infantry, which is what you want to do with Olji Mundok, Osman really needs a rage engine due to his third skill. So I don't think this is really the best pairing for Osman, but it is a fine pairing. And if you were to put them together, I think you do need to use the Osman as the primary to take advantage of the skill tree, and you'll dip into the leadership tree for a few extra points. Now, as we make our way into the legendaries, there are, of course, some really solid options here. Richard I is a really solid pairing. You put these two together, they are extremely tanky. There's a lot of stats, a lot of debuffs that get thrown around by the Richard and the Ulji. I think this pairing is really solid, and if anybody's crazy enough to attack a Richard and Ulji, yeah, the fourth skill from Ulji Mundok is going to help make the two remarkably prickly and do some extra damage back and punish them for having attacked them. The other really obvious early game pair here is a Charles Martel, and in many ways, Charles Martel is like the upgraded better version of an Ulji Mundok, although Ulji doesn't have a shield effect. Both of them have really solid anti-swarm technology and a huge amount of infantry stats. The Charles Martel, however, offers you a bunch of march speed when expertised. And once I got my Charles Martel to like 5511, I replaced the Ulji with Charles and honestly haven't looked back in a lot of situations. That said, you can put the two of them together and put them on the front line, and that works really well, reducing the defense of the target, having a ton of stats, being really defensive, uh, and having a lot of anti-swarm technology. I think the two work together extremely well. Continuing through to some additional legendary commanders, of course, Alexander the Great is a pretty solid pairing with just about everything. Alexander the Great solves the problem you've been having of march speed, but by the time you get your access to Alexander the Great, you've probably already graduated from the Olji Mundok, or if you haven't yet, then I think they are a fine pairing. Alexander the Great covers the things that Olji Mundok didn't have. March speed, a little bit of extra sustain from the shields, I like that combo a lot and would highly recommend it. By the time you've got Guan Yu in Rise of Kingdoms, I think you've fully replaced Ulji Mundok in most of your uses for him. But if you were running around with like five marches of all infantry, you could pair Guan Yu with Ulji Mundok. Guan Yu would need to be the primary due to the nature of his first skill. And you will do a lot of skill damage with the pair of them. There'll be still a glass cannon. But, oh boy, if they attack you, you will punish them back from that fourth skill on Ulji Mundok, assuming that because you're so squishy, <laughs> they don't just uh, swarm you down really fast, you'll be able to do a good bit of damage back. Another mid-game uh, legendary commander that becomes available is Constantine. I think the Constantine Ulji Mundok is fine, but I don't love it. And although both of them are very tanky, neither of them has the march speed that we've been looking for. For that reason, as I've been saying, I prefer commanders like Alexander the Great or an expertise Charles Martel to get you around places faster. But if you're using them in Canyon, well, these two will be a great pair. You didn't need March Speed anyways. Put them on the front line and that will do some serious work. Commanders that don't require infantry that you could consider pairing with would be a commander like Freddy and Julius Caesar. Both of these commanders want a Rage Engine. Olji doesn't have it. I would probably pass on trying to make those pairs work. Final infantry pairs that I suppose you could get a look at include Harold and Leonidas. Again, at this point, you're so far into the game that I'd have to wonder why you're considering Olji Mundok at all at that point. However, if you did want to put them together, I think it's kind of a funny thing how uh, Harold has got some anti-swarm technology doing some AoE skill damage. That skill damage will get elevated a whole heck of a lot if Olji Mundok is paired with him and they're getting swarmed. And last but not least, the Leonidas combination. I think you could do better because Leonidas is looking for a pairing where you reduce the attack of the target or silence the target. Ulji isn't really doing that. I think that while Leonidas offers a lot of tankiness, right, and a lot of rage restoration, which is something that Ulji wants, um, you, you really do want to pair Leonidas with someone who can dish out that silence or attack reduction so that you get 50% more damage to Leonidas' active skill. Now, as far as garrison for your city goes, this, of course, is a different situation entirely. You have lots of options for defending your city if you're using Ulji Mundok in that pairing. What matters more is which of those commanders has the best talents, and that should determine who the primary commander is for defending your city. 
Uh, so a commander like Sun Tzu, for instance, I think has a lot of really great talents. I'm a huge advocate of a Sun Tzu primary for city defense. You could pair with Old Jumundok, or really any of the other epics, or even any of the other legendary garrison commanders, because when you're defending your city, it's not about bringing one troop type. At that point, you have all troop types represented, and so you're really just looking for your two very best garrison commanders to be together, regardless of what troop type they support, unless you've got like a major crazy overtrain on one type of troop, and you want to stack in garrison commanders that benefit that troop type the most. As an example, maybe you've been training all cavalry and you want to have a Pelagius on the wall, then it becomes maybe more relevant for Pelagius to be a primary and you get some points in the cavalry tree if you wanted. But heck, these are some sort of advanced ideas. And I think we've more than covered where Uldimundok is good today. To sort of summarize how I feel about this commander, I think he's solid in the early game and mid game. If you're bringing infantry marches into the field, He's got some really solid anti-swarm technology and utility from the debuff, but he's missing the march speed he needs to get around and get away from combats where the situations go bad. For that reason, I would prefer to have him in situations where you don't need tons of march speed. That includes Sunset Canyon as the primary candidate, but in that case, because of his talent trees, you really want him to be the secondary so you can have someone else's talents at the helm. Now, I personally have used him for a very long time as a secondary to Sun Tzu in the offlane. However, at some point, I think all governors do graduate away from their Ulji Mundok and toward a commander like Charles Martel, who offers a lot of the same sort of feel in terms of their effectiveness on the battlefield. Uh, but at 5511, yeah, your Charles Martel is good enough to start using. Even a 5311. You're good to go for that Charles Martel over the Olji Mundok. As far as equipment goes for an Olji Mundok, your standard infantry gear is good. But if you are going to use him in the field, I would strongly recommend the Windswept set for the extra march speed. Not only because he's missing march speed, but because also infantry are very slow in general. So that'll start to offset the fact that he is a little bit slower and a little bit more at risk of being unable to chase down the enemies that you're beating and that you will get chased down by the enemies beating you. If you're looking for more epic commander guides, I'll have a playlist up in the top for all of our epic talent build guides uh, and redone guides, remastered guides uh, in 2020 and beyond. So you can go check that out. Let me know if there are more epics for which you'd like to see a remastered guide. Put your comment down below with the epic you want me to go pay attention to. Because, hey, I worked on Olji Mundok in part because a whole bunch of you asked for it. So you just let me know what you'd like to see. Throw a like on the video so that I know this is the sort of thing you're interested in. And consider subscribing for more remastered epic commander guides in 2020 and beyond. Until next time. You have fun smashing the kingdom.